So it's four years on since I've owned this Falraven Abisco Light 2. When I first bought the tent, I did a video on the setup and the first look on this tent. If you want to see that and see how to put the tent up, click on the link above. So yeah, four years on, I think it was about time I gave you my opinions on this tent after four years of use. So what we'll do first, empty the bag and see what you get. So we'll just uh, run through this pretty quickly. So you get um, a steak bag, you have, um, you'll need 15 DAC 6 inch aluminium V-pegs. I carry a spare so I've got 16 steaks. Um, it's a two pole system, you get the, the DAC NSL aluminium colour coded poles. You have two and you have spare sections there just in case you, in case you break any. Um, you get waterproof pitching instructions. You get a, a spare splint, um, a patch kit, needle and cotton, um, a silicone seam sealer with a brush, a spare Dyneema guy line. That bag there is for the footprint. The footprint doesn't come with this tent, that's an optional extra. And total weight with the footprint um, comes in around 2.6 kilos. So I'll just uh, show you uh, around the outside of the tent. Um, where you've got this entrance here, the end, you've got one entrance on the side. Um, you can actually pull pull this back, um, right back to have more ventilation in better weather. On the front, you can do it on the front. And on the back of the tent, you can also remove all the pegs and tie back the back of the fly to the top to reveal the inner tent and give you more ventilation on the back end of the tent in better weather as well. So the main fly is the top, the top of the fly is 20D ripstop so nylon. The bottom area comes down to the ground is a 40D sill nylon ripstop. So you have six guy lines and if you look where the poles go, those little plastic cups and they're called fox feet. So you've got one pole in there, you can actually buy a kit to have two extra poles to fit one there and one in, in, the, in the other side as well to give you more stability in windy or weather. As you can see this tent is a low profile design, it's quite low to the ground and the reason for that is to keep the weight down. Um, I like this zip cover here, keep the rain out, you've got uh, a two way zip so you can pull it down from the top and I'll stop any rain dripping into the, ve into, into the vestibule. So you've got a vent on the front and there is one on the back as well. So this tent as you can see is the pine green version. Uh, they do two other colours, one is a, a blue, like a light blue and they do a satin colour as well. But to be honest, I prefer the green as it tends to blend in with the, the surroundings a lot better, I think. So one thing I don't like about this tent, as it's a, a, a sill nylon material, when it gets wet, it tends to sag. And more often than not, you've got to come out of the tent during the night or whatever and pull all the um, all the straps on the corner to tension the tent back up because it does sag down a bit and that's one thing I do not like about this tent it tends to sag in the middle and 
like I said, you've got to keep tensing the guys and the um, corner straps to, to tighten it up again. So that is a bit of a pain to be, to be truthful. Right, you've seen the outside of the tent. Let's take a look inside. Right, inside the tent. I'll just show you around. You've got a pocket this side. Pocket this side. So you've got two pockets in this tent in total. And here the tent is made of 15D ribstop polyamide. I should have mentioned earlier, this, this tent you can pitch the inner and the fly at the same time. It's all connected together. So, if you're camping in wet weather, it's going to be ideal. So, I'll show you the front. There's a vent there. For the cover. There's one on the back as well. Also, you've got the Dyneema clothesline on the top, which I find very handy if I'm hanging up a lamp and other bits and pieces. Um, another thing I don't, I don't like about this tent is the size of the vestibule. Because, bear in mind, a two-person tent, um, we've had difficulty um, cooking in here, the two of us, so really only one person can sort of cook in this, in this space. And um, one little tip for you guys is when you're using a frying pan, don't put a hot frying pan on top of the footprint, because that's what happens. I love this big door on the entrance to the tent. It's nice and big. You've got two zips. This manure reveals this big bug net 20D polyester. And then the main door will just drop down onto the floor, which I like. And then you can fold everything over and you're going to attach it with these toggles. Yeah, you know, I said about the, um, the pockets in this tent, um, there's one each side by the entrance. It would have been nice to have another pocket maybe on the back each side to give it a bit more storage. There's a lot of dog walkers coming around here now. Anyway, you're probably wondering what the tent is like in bad weather. Well, we have used this tent quite a lot on high ground, on summits, in, in uh, strong winds, and the tent has held up really well. Um, unfortunately, we haven't used this tent in any sort of storm conditions, but um, I'm sure if you point the back end of the tent into the wind uh, with its low profile design, I'm, I'm sure this tent will do a good job. So the biggest negative for me in this tent is the head height. I'm five foot nine and I'm currently sat on a sleeping pad which is approximately two inches thick. My head is touching the inner and I'm basically pushing up the inner with my head because I'm trying to get a bit of room to sit up and it's pretty difficult and it's even pushing me back down. So if you're five foot nine or taller you're going to struggle in this tent to set up. Um, another thing uh, which I don't like about the tent, and everyone knows most tents suffer from condensation, and this one's no exception. Um, it's a sill nylon tent, and when it gets wet, it tends to sag. It tends to sag down, and basically, I've had a touch in the inner tent, and I've, been, I've woken up a couple of times where the water's coming through the inner and dripping onto my head and onto my sleeping pad and uh, I got them pretty wet um, basically I think it, you know the only way you can try and keep that to a minimum is have the both vents open one at the one at the back one at the front and even drop the door down slightly so you can have a free flow of air coming through so I think the key thing is is uh, condensation management but it's not the only tent that gets condensation. I, I suppose nearly every tent it gets the same issues. 
it's just the way you try and keep it down to a, a reasonable level I think. I hope I don't sound like I'm uh, bashing this tent and criticising it too much. It's a great tent and it's got loads of great features. Um, but on the topic of the head height, um, while I'm sat on a sleeping pad and I'm trying to take a drink of water out of a water bottle, I tend to find that you know, like you got to sort of lean and then the bottle's hitting the top of the inn and it's pretty hard to take a drink. But um, when you're sat directly on the floor, it's not an issue. You know, it's not the end of the world, I just find it a bit annoying, that's all. As this tent is a two-person tent, um, you will easily get two sleeping pads in here side by side. Uh, me and Mark have done it on numerous occasions when we've shared the tent together and you know we're two regular sized guys and we have we've had no problem sleeping side by side in this tent. I'm laying down on this pad now, my head is right on the door end, it's almost touching, and you've got a, an easy 15 inches um, gap on the foot end from the end of my pad to the end of the tent. So what this tent lacks in height you definitely gain in length. So with this extra space at the end of the um, sleeping pad, like I said it's about 15 inches, you could probably squeeze about two rucksacks in the end of there, which will free up some space in the vestibule for cooking. I think I've covered all bases on this Fowl Raven Abisco Light 2. Of course it's only my personal opinion after four years of owning and using this tent. If you'd like to leave a comment, leave it in the comment section. I always re reply back. Of course all tents have pros and cons and this was no exception. Um, if you made it this far into the video, um, consider subscribing and give us a big thumbs up and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified of any future tent reviews or wild camping adventures. So what I'll do now, I'll end the video here and I'll leave you with the technical and the specifications about this tent. Thanks for watching.